I had to build a relationship with them brick by brick. Mm -hmm. Just had to build it, you know, and I had to do it not as a parent with a child, but more like as an adult with another adult. You know, it's kind of a little bit easier to invest in, you know, the little ones because, you know, they're all about you and they adore you and all that. They're cute. They're cute. And when they get to teenagers, they're not so cute and they're not so adoring, you know. So it can feel like a really difficult time. That's a stage of development. Mm -hmm where they're grumpy, you know, and they're, they've got hormones and, and, uh, and they feel like a victim and everything, else, everything is somebody else's fault. Right. And your job as a parent is to train them out right. of that mindset. Mentality. Right. But you can't go through life that way. That's true. You know, but it, it, it can feel very hopeless because a lot of times when you have a divorce situation, it can be difficult because you know, your teenager may decide they want to live at the other parent's house because the other parent allows them to participate in all the things that you won't let them do. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And it becomes a contest, doesn't it? Yeah. So a lot of parents start having this contest of trying to win the child by being the most fun parent or being the more lenient parent. And that's absolutely one of the worst things you can do for your kid. It's as with the little ones, it's about the relationship. Right. It's about establishing a relationship with, uh, with your young people uh, and investing something in the emotional bank account. Right. So that you have some capital. Right. Uh, so one of the, the first things we recommend is you, know, you have to wave the white flag on controlling the other world. Yeah, unless you have something really, really serious that the court is going to change custody over. And here we're talking about abuse and neglect, really. Right. Right. Um, then, uh, then you really, to, to, to say, well, I'm going to stop mom from smoking pot around the kids or I'm going to stop dad from staying up all night playing video games with the kids, with, the, with your teenagers, uh, you know, or your teenagers allowing them to do that by right. themselves. Uh, it's, it's a forlorn hope in, right. in some ways. Right. Uh, you can't control that actively, but there's part of your life and part of your world that you have total control over. And what's that? It's your world. Right. Uh, you control what your world looks like, and that therein lies the leverage. This is how you're going to win this this game. Because on a certain level, the teenagers ha- have the same desire the little kids do. They want your attention. The thing is, is that you do have your time and approval to give to that teenager. And the thing is, is that, you know, I would say that between our, you know, I think Thomas's kids are a great example of this because between our households, I think the rules tend to be more lenient at mom's house than our house uh, because mom's just kind of a more easygoing parent and goosey goosey. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah, it's a little more you know She's crunchy. It's a little more live and let live, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> whatever they want to do, and I don't. We don't really have that philosophy, but. What we do have is when the boys are with us, you engage with them and you take them surfing and you do things. So I think that if you talk to the boys, they would say, well, there's things they like about mom's house and there's things they like about dad's house. And those things are totally different things. But I don't think they would want to give either one of those things up and be with the other parent more. And again, what we tend to do is get very focused on what the other parent is allowing and we forget about bonding with the child. And so when you're worried about what the other parent is allowing, that's when you start getting stuck in that cycle and in that trap and you actually make the situation worse because you're more focused on the other parent than you are on actually bonding with the child. And that's where you start litigating and and that screws up everything. Right. And if you can stay focused on having a relationship with the child and don't let the fear get to you. It's going to take time. It, things don't happen overnight. But you can bond with the kids and be 
right. you know, involved, you know, you know, and, and keep them wanting to be with you regardless of what's going on with the other parents. And honestly, if the other parent is more permissive than you, like Thomas said, unless they're really allowing the child to do something that endangers them, um, probably not something you're going to win in court. You know, if a teenager's staying up all night, Friday and Saturday night on the weekend playing video games, and you think that's not good for them, but then they're going back to school on Monday morning and okay, they're tired and they're whatever, and we don't like that and that's not good, but that doesn't really they're not going to die from that the court's not going to see that as again the court's going to say what's more important the relationship with the parent that's allowing that or right, crushing yeah. that that you know practice and what they're going to say is the relationship with the parents more important teenagers are like animals they smell fear you <laughs> cannot be fearful of parenting your teenager i parented boys pretty much by myself thomas was in the house but their dad wasn't around as much as he could have been and i remember times having conflict especially with my older one he seems to have been the tougher teenager but him 17 18 and standing just nose to nose with me and me thinking i really am not sure if this child's going to punch me or not you know but i (laughs) could not in that moment let him see that fear i had to stand up to that and say you will you know back down you will do what you're told you will lose your car for two weeks because you chose to you know drink at this party or you know whatever like Mm -hmm. you know i had consequences for things and so you have to really not be afraid because if you start being afraid then you're just then that kid is going to become the controller of your life right yeah they'll they'll take control yeah and it's interesting because a lot of times for us the child we have the most trouble with is usually in my experience the child that is most like the other parent So a lot of times the (laughs) conflict that you had with the other parent starts to play out through that same dynamic with the child because they move through the world a lot of the ways the other parent does, you know, and and, and you start replaying the conflict. And, you know, the difference is in this situation, this isn't your spouse, this is your child. And you do need to have that boundary and that discipline. And you cannot be afraid to parent your teenager because you will you will sink down a dark, deep hole. So the bottom line is uh, you want more time with your teenager. Uh, or you don't, maybe. And, you, know, you can lobby the teenager and beg them and plead them or try to make the, their world you know, as teenage-friendly, in your view, lax, uh, crazy as, uh, as possible in order to entice them. Right. Or you can create a truly healthy environment where they can develop and grow and find their identity as people. We'll grow in-